to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim the news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 116, verse 15. Welcome to our study of death. Are you ready to die? What does the Bible say about death? In our world, death is viewed as a black and a dark and a dreary day, a day that is behaved to postpone as long as you can, and it's the saddest, most dreary day in someone's life. People view it that way in the world. But is that the way the Christian ought to feel about death? Such is far from what the New Testament teaches about death. To the child of God, death is not a day of doom and gloom. The day of our death, if we've lived faithful, ought to be the greatest day ever. It is a home going for the child of God who's been faithful. And so today as we think about what the Bible teaches concerning death, we ask, are you ready to die? Are you sure you know, number one, what the Bible teaches about death? Are you ready to meet the Lord and will your death be a day of rejoicing or a day of sorrow? Well, what do we know about the subject of death from the scriptures? We first know that death is inevitable. That is, there is a day coming when each one of us will die and no matter how hard we try, no matter what we do, you can't escape that day. All will have to face death. Look at the words of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. The scripture says, very simply, And it is appointed for, as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Just as it is appointed for death, so we're going to be judged. It is true that each person living will one day stand before God and give an account of the things they've done in this life. And just as true is the fact that we will all have to die. The Bible teaches that if we're lucky, we've got 70, maybe 80 years upon this earth. That's if we're lucky, Psalm 90, verses 10 through 12. And friend, we need to live our life. We need to live our life in view of the fact that my departure, my death is inevitable and that it could happen at any time. Here's a sad example of a man who wasn't ready for death. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21 rich fool there had a great crop year. And so he said to his soul, so you've got many goods laid up for many years. In essence, take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. And you know what God said to that man? You fool, this night will your soul be required of you. Then whose things will those be whom you've acquired? And the point is, so he is he who is rich, but not in godliness. That man had left God out of his affairs. He had not been living his life right, and the day of his demise came, and he wasn't prepared. Oftentimes, we're not prepared for what's going to happen. Woody Allen is famous for saying, it's not that I'm afraid to die. I just don't want to be there when it happens. You know, a lot of us feel that way. We don't, we're, the idea of death, we know that's going to come. We would just like to not be there and not feel it when it happens. Well, death's inevitable. I'm going to be there and it's going to happen and I need to get ready for that day mentally. For some, I know death may be sooner than later. The Bible makes it abundantly clear that our day, our demise may be soon or it may be long. We don't know, but we do know that life is short. Look in James chapter 4, and I want you to notice what the scripture teaches in verse 14. The Bible says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time, then it vanishes away. My death, the day of my demise, may not be that far away. We live life like it's going to be 60, 70, maybe 80 years from now. But it may be tomorrow. We don't know. But life is very, very short. That idea in James 4, 14 Life is like a vapor. That word for vapor used in the Greek New Testament is the word for vapor or dew that's on the ground. You go out in the morning, the grass is covered in dew. No sooner has the sun come out and that dew vanishes. 
That's what life is like for the child of God. Job 14, 1 says, Man who's born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Life is like a runner running in a race. Job 7, verse 6, Life is like a, a weaver shuttle. My grandmother had an old-timey sewing machine, and as she pumped the pedal on that sewing machine, the wheel spun, and the faster you pump the pedal, the more it spun. Well, that's the idea of life. It's spinning out of control sometimes, and, and we need to make sure that we realize death may be sooner than later for some of us. Some people live too long. That is, they live long enough to fall away from the Lord. Some people die too soon. They don't, get that, uh, they don't take advantage of that opportunity to obey God. Before his death in 1981, American writer William Sororan telephoned in to the Associated Press this final, very Sororan-like ob observation when he said, Everyone has got to die, but I always believed an exception would be made in my case. Now what? He hadn't prepared. His life wasn't ready. He knew one day it was going to come, but he thought, well, maybe an exception will be made for me. No, such is not the case. Death may be sooner than later for some of us. Let's realize also that sin is the cause of our death. Oftentimes when people die, when, when, when that comes into our life, we, we want to look up to heaven and we'll say, God, why'd you let this person die? But in reality, man is the cause for death. Here's what God said in Genesis chapter 2. Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of, the good, and of good and evil you shall not eat, for the day and you eat it, you will surely die. Genesis 2 verse 17. You turn over to the very next chapter. Open the leaf on the page, and in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve are tempted by Satan. They eat of that forbidden tree, that fruit, and as a result, death came into the world. But we can't just blame Adam and Eve. We can't just blame Satan. For Romans 5 verse 12 says, Sin entered in the world through one man because all, but death came to all because all have sinned. I've got just as much to blame as anybody because of my choices, because of my sin, because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Death exists today. And so don't look up and say, God, why'd you let this happen? Man is the ultimate cause of death and I have also sinned and thus I can blame myself as well. But then let's realize this, the way you live your life is going to determine if your death is a time of sorrow and sadness or if it's the greatest day of rejoicing ever. Death doesn't have to be sad. Oh, there are days and there are sermons that preachers preach at people's funerals that are very sad. People who've lived in immorality, people who've lived in ungodliness, people who've never obeyed the gospel, how sad it is. Those people weren't ready when their day came. But on the other hand, those who realized, for to me, to live as Christ, is gain, to live as Christ and to die is gain, those who were faithful unto death, Revelation 10, verse 10, their day, their day of departure is the greatest day ever. Think about the two people in Luke chapter 16. You've got the rich man and you've got Lazarus. What about the rich man's death? Was it a good day or a bad day? Here's what's said. The rich man died. Oh, it was a day of sorrow. It was a day of destruction for that man. Lazarus also died, and watch this, and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. You've got two people. One lived selfishly, one lived ungodly, and on the day of his death, the epitaph was, the rich man died. What a sad day. Lazarus didn't have anything. He didn't have money. He, he ate crumbs from the, the master of the rich man's table. The dogs licked his sores. But on the day of his death, the epitaph is, Lazarus also died. He was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The way you live your life now, will determine if the day of your death is a day of sorrow or a day of rejoicing. How are you living your life? Are you living your life in faithfulness to God? If you died right now, and friend, we're not trying to put scare tactics on anybody, but we want you to think soberly. If you die right now, would people say, thank God he was faithful to the Lord and he died in Christ? Or would they need a box of Kleenexes to cover all the tears they'll shed because you weren't right with God.
The matters we're talking about today are matters of utmost importance. Well, what's the benefits of death? Someone says, okay, you've said death is a good thing for the Christian. Death is something we ought to look for. What makes death so good? Where are the benefits of it? Death, number one, ends suffering and pain. Think of an example. Someone who is a faithful child of God comes down with cancer. Their body is riddled with that cancer. It's eaten up with it. Their life is going away every day. And they haven't the health that they once had. And you can just look at them and see how it's taking hold of their life. And they die. Good thing or a bad thing? For the child of God. That was a good thing. Let's say someone's in a car wreck and, and their life is now maimed and they don't have the same health that they once had and, and they perish because of that. Ended their suffering if they were faithful to the Lord. That was only a good thing. Think about what Revelation 21 and verse 4 says about the benefits of death. Listen to these beautiful words. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Death, no more pain, no more crying. All the suffering and the pain that we have now, death brings an end to with finality. And so when I think about benefits of death, it does end our suffering and pain. A proper view of death, I believe, will give us a proper view of life. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 teaches we're all one day going to have to go that way. Amos 4 verse 12, the scripture teaches, prepare to meet your God. When I think soberly, when I think seriously about death, it, it helps me to realize I'm not going to be here forever. I need to view life the way God views it because one day there's a final day coming. Well, how should I view life? I ought to view it as an opportunity to glorify God. Isaiah 43, verse 7, God says, Everyone who's called by my name, listen, whom I created for my glory. I ought to use it as an opportunity to fear and respect God. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. I ought to use it as an opportunity to take advantage of getting my soul right with God. I want you to listen real carefully to the questions Jesus asked in Mark chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. Notice what Jesus asked. Jesus said, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? When I come to the, the sober reality, one day you're going to die. And then I hear the questions of Jesus. What will it profit if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? What are you going to give in exchange for your soul? It reminds me, nothing is of greater value and more importance than my soul. Death ought to remind each of us, I'm here and this is my one shot to get right with God. Death helps us to focus on the eternal, not the temporary. We look for those things that are eternal in nature, not temporary. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 16 through 18. We look forward to that new heaven and that new earth where righteousness will prevail. We know that there is a day coming when the Lord will call those who have done right to live with Him eternal life and those who have done wrong to live in eternal death. Matthew 24, verses 34 through 36. I'm reminded of John Owen, a Puritan, as he lay on his deathbed. His secretary wrote in his name to a friend, I'm still in the land of the living. But then he said, stop. Change that and say, I'm yet in the land of the dying. I hope to soon be in the land of the living. How true it is that death helps us to realize this is temporary, this is not going to last forever, and I need to keep my focus on the land of the living, going home and being with God for eternity. You know, death can also help us to refine or purify our lives. James 4 verse 8, we're to cleanse our hands. We're to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. James 1 verses 2 through 4, our, our trials and our tribulations, they, they help to perfect us. And we're to rejoice in those trials, knowing the testing of our faith produces patience. Well, death can help me to realize when someone close to me dies, I ought to always ask the question, what if that were me? 
Every time I pass by a casket, I say to myself, that's going to be you one day. Are you ready? It helps me to refine and to purify my life and to realize with great sobriety that we're all one day going to die and death is inevitable, but there are great benefits to death. Well, let's then take some encouragement from death. Death is not that dark and dreary day as we have seen already from Scripture, but what encouragement do we have when we do look forward to death, when someone close to us dies? What encouragement is there? The Bible clearly teaches that death for the Christian is a blessing. Listen carefully. Did you know that from God's standpoint, death is not a bad thing? Listen to the words of Psalm 116, verse 15. The Bible says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. From God's perspective, it's not a bad thing. God says it's precious. And you know, from man's standpoint, it's also a good day. I want you to notice the words of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. Look at what the scripture says. John said, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Death is a blessing for the child of God, for we get to go home and be with the Lord. Think about what Paul said. For to me to live is Christ, and watch this, and to die is what? Is a gain. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13, we're not to sorrow as others who do not have hope. Yes, there may be sorrow at the loss of a loved one. Even Jesus wept, John 11 verse 35, but we sorrow differently. How is that? As those who do have hope, because we know this is not the end. John 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus said, here's the hope, here's why it's a blessing. I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, Jesus said, though he may die, he'll live again. We have hope beyond the grave. Another encouragement from death is that you can't get to heaven without dying first. Did you know that? You can't get to heaven without first dying. We sing about heaven we pray about heaven, we preach and talk about heaven, but sometimes we forget. I can't go to heaven without dying first. Paul said, I'm hard pressed between the two. I want to stay and do God's will, but I really want to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. You've got to die to go to heaven. A little boy was seen taking a shortcut across the cemetery as it was about dark. He was later asked by some of his friends, aren't you afraid to go through the cemetery, especially at that time of night? Here's what he said. He said, no, I only go there because the cemetery is the shortcut home. Isn't that true for each and every one of us? Death is only a shortcut to the way home. Why would we want to stay here longer? than man's allotted days. We need to realize you can't get to heaven without dying first. We need to realize also that God will care for the dead. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7, the body returns to the earth, to the dust, but the spirit returns to God who gave it. Luke chapter 16 verse 22, Lazarus was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. He was in paradise with God. I can say to myself and I can know that when someone dies, here's an encouragement I have, they're in the hands of the master keeper. They're in the best hands ever. God can help them and deal with them and care for them far better than I could ever care for them. They're in the best hands. Then I know an encouragement from death is that if faithful, the dead in Christ are in paradise. Luke chapter 23 and verse 43, Jesus said to the one on the cross who changed his way and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. You remember what Jesus said to that man? This day you'll be with me in paradise. Oh, how we long to be in that beautiful place called paradise and ultimately in heaven itself. When I think about the, the beauty and the splendor of heaven, death begins to pale in comparison. I believe the words of Revelation 21 verse 4 help us greatly to understand the beauty of heaven. I believe it's one of the most tender verses about God's nature. The Bible says in Revelation 21 verse 4, God will wipe away every tear from their eye. That verse means a great deal to me because I often think of my grandmother 
she was from a different era, an era when women often wore aprons and they often had flour on them. They'd been working in the kitchen and I remember often staying with her. And if I would bump my knee or if I'd skin myself up and I began to cry, here she would come with that apron and she would take that apron and she would wipe every tear out of my eye. You know, I think of God and how much greater God is able to do that than anyone. God is going to make heaven a beautiful place. If the faithful die in Christ, we know an encouragement we have is that they are in paradise. Here's a gravestone epitaph that often reminds me of this. It says this, Here lies the body of Solomon Pease, under the daisies and under the trees. Pease is not here, only the pod. Pease shelled out, went home to God. How true it is that when we die, the body may stay in the grave, there may be that pod, but our spirit returns to God who gave it, and if we've lived faithful, we're in that place called heaven. Now, it won't do us any good. We won't do justice today to the subject of death if we don't, for just a few moments, think about death's message for the living. I know now that death is coming. I know it's not that dark, dreary day. I know there's even encouragement I can take from death, but what does death Say to the living today, if death could speak to each one of us, what would it say? Number one, wake up. Don't live life in a nonchalant, lackadaisical attitude and go through life asleep. Wake up. Think about the words of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Wake up because the time is coming when all of us are going to die. I think of the example of Matthew 25. Probably one of the saddest verses in Scripture. You've got the story of the ten virgins. The master is coming. Five are ready, five are not. The five who weren't ready, they went to buy all, and while they were away, the master came and the door was shut. That was their chance. They missed it. Now is the opportunity and now is the time to live for Christ. Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Death's second message is live life to the fullest. Don't go around moping and dreary and all is gloom and doom. This is your opportunity. Make the most of it. And friend, how could the Christian not do that? John 10 verse 10, Jesus said that we've been given life and that we've been given it more abundantly. As a child of God, I have the best life in the here and now and I have the promise of the fullest life to come. I have everything I need in this life. 2 Peter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, God has given us, through His divine power, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us. We've got to work while it is day, for night comes when no man works, and we've got to work unto the Lord, not as unto men, because God is the one who will reward us. Live life to the fullest. And thirdly, enjoy life while you're here. Spend time doing the things that God has set before us. Don't go through life holding grudges. Don't go through life angry. Don't go through life bitter. Enjoy life while you're here and use it to prepare for eternal life right now. That's what life ought to be about. Every time a boy went to his playmate's house, he saw this young man's grandmother studying her Bible. Finally, this friend asked the other friend about it. Why is your grandmother always reading the Bible? He answered, I don't know, but I think she's cramming for finals. You know, friends, that's so true. We need to use the time and the opportunity we have now to make sure that we're right with God. Listen carefully. It is appointed to man once to die and then the judgment. That means me and that means you. All of us are one day going to pass from this life. All of us are going to stand before God in judgment and thus realize the seriousness of death and life. We have the opportunity now. 
we have everything we need from God to get to heaven, or are you taking advantage of it? Friend, if it came right down to it, listen carefully, if it came right down to it, would you be ready to die? Are you ready to die? Are you sure that you're right with God and that the day of your death would be a day of rejoicing? The good news is, you can know you've got eternal life. 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You can know the truth, and the truth can make you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. If you're not a child of God, friend, you're in the saddest state, the most dangerous state ever. What if the Lord comes back? Or what if you die before you obey the gospel? Won't you seriously consider today making it right with God. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, John chapter 8, verse 24, if you're willing to repent of those things in your life that you know are not right, change your will and change your way of life, Luke 13, verse 3, if you'll make that good confession, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, Acts 8, verses 36 through 39. And if you'll be immersed in water for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 22, verse 16, you are beginning to prepare. You're on your way to seeing death, not as a dark and gloomy day, but as a day of rejoicing. If, as a child of God, one who has obeyed the gospel, we ask you, have you been living your life? Have you been living in faithful service to the Lord? Have you been putting Christ and His kingdom first? Matthew 6, 33. Have you been obeying the commandments of God? John 14, verse 15. Having you been keeping yourself out of the world and sin? If as a child of God, you die and go to hell. Now listen carefully. I believe the same fire is going to burn on hell that believes on a non-Christian, that burns on a Christian as does a non-Christian. But if it's a child of God, I go to hell. I believe it'll be worse for me because I know what I'm missing out on. Don't miss out on the beauty of heaven. Live your life in such a way. Live a life of such faithfulness that when your day comes, even if that's tomorrow, you're ready and you can say, I'm ready to go and be with the Lord, which is far better. May God help each of us to live life every day in view of death. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the gospel through TV, radio, and internet. Our motto is to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.